Hi, I'm Ed Thorne, here to walk you through Claro, the new EQ plugin from Sonox. Claro is an intuitive EQ plugin designed to help you make informed decisions throughout the music production process, from composition to final mix, whilst helping you blend your tracks into a clean, well-balanced mix. Claro has been designed to help you maintain creative focus and improve your workflow by utilizing three distinct processing stages with progressively more in-depth functionality and precision as you need it. This plugin has been designed to be used from the start of a production all the way to the end. At the beginning, we're just sculpting out the rough sound of the mix. In the middle section, we're going into more refined details. And in the last part of the plugin, we're going to be able to really execute those tiny little details that really, if we pay attention to those, will really set your mix apart. The plugin consists of three views. The produce view is geared towards broad strokes EQ to get the general tone you desire for an enjoyable recording experience whilst encouraging you to quickly move on to the next stage in your production. The tweak view incorporates a spectral analyzer providing further visual reference to aid your processing decisions. Tweak also hosts a series of professional studio standard EQ tools for more precise processing further into the mix process. The mix view enables you to explore the interaction and frequency collisions between tracks with visual aids to help you understand where frequencies and resonance are competing against each other in your mix. We'll explore these elements in more detail shortly, but already you can see there's a lot of tools in this plugin. They've really packed a lot of features into this. Claro also features auto gain like no other. Instead of compensating the output against a default pink noise curve like some other plugins, Claro actually considers the tonal signature of the track. Your track will maintain its level regardless of whether you're cutting or boosting frequencies on dark, bright or full range frequency signals. You can turn this feature off at any time and also freeze the auto gain, which is particularly useful if you're automating things like filter sweeps. Claro boasts advanced mono left, right, stereo, mid and side only filtering options as well as a width view to quickly create space while you're in the composition, production or early stages of a mix. The final tool in Claro's powerful arsenal is a multi-track workspace where multiple instances of the plugin on different channels communicate with each other to help you visualize how your audio channels are interacting in the context of a full mix to help you make even more refined processing decisions. So let's take a closer look at these sections. The primary focus of the produce view is to help you achieve the desired tonal shaping quickly and effectively without getting bogged down in precise mixing. Sonox wants you to retain focus on the creative process. I remember when I started recording and mixing, I would dive into the EQ and focus on tiny little details, make big notches in stuff, which would ultimately result in a thin sound. But more importantly, I was losing focus of the bigger picture and not plowing on with the recording. With this in mind, a purposefully limited set of three EQ filters provide broad tonal shaping, as well as a high and low cut. Hovering the cursor over each processor displays a selection of set frequency options to choose from. These have been inspired by various popular analog EQs and offer frequently used starting points. Simply select one, then click and drag the cursor for additive or subtractive EQ. Each of these is linked to a slider along the top which can also be used to further fine tune the filter parameters. Above this horizontal line, you'll notice combinations of descriptive words to help you identify tonal elements of your audio and where these occur in the frequency spectrum. If you're new to music production, this is a fantastic way of improving your EQ intuition without having to rely on complex terminology. But even if you're an experienced audio engineer, these are really helpful when you're in the creative mindset or communicating with clients. For example, if I say the bass at 180 hertz is too prominent, not everyone's going to understand that, but if you say, oh, it sounds a bit muddy, or the client says it sounds a bit muddy, that's where you can use this graph and use these words to isolate exactly what you need to adapt with the EQ. To demonstrate this, listen to how boosting the corresponding region on the bass adds warmth, but too much and it clutters and muddies the mix. And if we try cutting this region, you'll hear a lot of the muddy confusion is cleared out of the mix.
Shelf tabs toggle between high and low processors being set to bell filters or shelves. These shelves sound super musical, very clean and great for cleaning up muddiness or harshness while adding low end weight or air respectively. On stereo tracks, a tone slash width button appears in the plug-in footer. Toggle it to switch between overall stereo tone shaping and stereo width shaping. The produced spectral analyzer shows you where the energy exists without distracting you with short term peaks. Brighter sections display prominent frequency ranges and the darker areas represent little or no sound energy. When using mid and side width parameters, bright meter sections on the width tab show regions with a wide stereo image, while dark areas show where the signal is narrower or mono. The tone tab is designed to help you get into good production habits by using broad strokes of EQ to shape the overall tone applied to the full stereo spectrum rather than getting bogged down in precise cuts and notches and this will help you maintain your creative workflow. The width tab controls the side energy of the stereo channels. For example, focus your bass channel into mono by introducing a low cut filter on the sides or broaden your vocals by boosting the air frequencies on the sides. Moving on to the tweak view and you'll notice any filtering we applied in the produce view will be viewable. If we toggle between the two windows, changes can be made in either section and will be applied and visible in both sections. Tweak view is where we can operate precise surgical filtering and Claro has all the professional tools we need to do this, such as filter slopes as steep as 120 decibels per octave. As in produce view along the top, we have a series of positive descriptive words to help us identify desirable qualities in the audio. Boosting in these ranges will give us a desired tonal effect. We also have another series of descriptive prompts along the bottom, indicating less desirable tonal attributes. Cutting in these ranges will help remove these tonal qualities from our audio. For example, on this master bus for a track I'm working on at the moment, I can boost the warmth. Or I can cut the mud. And I can boost the definition. Or I can cut the harshness. The real-time spectral metering in Tweak is different to produce. It displays a visual representation of the sound energy in blue, which follows your intentions, changing the speed and smoothness as you make changes. For example, if you're doing broader tonal changes, the analyzer is smooth and slow. But if you're making more surgical notches, the analyzer becomes more responsive and detailed. Resonating frequencies or frequency hotspots are highlighted in blue. This visual aid allows us to target problem areas quickly without having to sweep and scan for the problem areas. Below the descriptive words at the top of the window is a piano roll which indicates the notes our EQ points are centered to, giving musical context and it's great for those lucky people with perfect pitch. By selecting an EQ node and right clicking, we can choose the type of filter we want to work with, cuts, shelves or bell shapes, and which part of the signal we're processing, the mid, sides, left or right, or the full stereo spectrum. We can even split the left and right sides of the signal should we want to process the EQ differently on each side. The EQ split is a powerful tool for mastering. Floating controls allow the user to adjust the following options. Gain by selecting the EQ node and dragging it vertically to adjust the band's gain without adjusting the frequency, or double click on the floating value to enter parameters manually. Select an EQ node and slide horizontally to adjust the frequency or note without adjusting the gain. The shelves can be set to varying degrees of roll off using the vertical slider all the way up to 120 decibels per octave, resulting in a brick wall filter. The width of each EQ node can be adjusted using the vertical slider and the shape of each EQ node can be adjusted to create precise EQ curves, bells and rectangular shapes. Listen mode can be implemented to solo each filter point by option clicking on the EQ node you wish to solo or clicking on and holding the headphone icon. This is particularly useful for sliding across the spectrum to identify problem areas. Again, the visual aid of the before and after curves are very useful. 
When processing audio, Claro displays both the outline of the original signal EQ and the resulting processed EQ. Moving on to the final view mode, and this is where this plugin gets very interesting. By assigning multiple instances of Claro onto different channels, we can link the EQ and assess how all of the tracks are working in relation to each other. To do this quickly in Logic, simply select multiple tracks in the mixer view and add Claro to one of them. How to do this in other doors can be found in the accompanying user manual. The channel list on the left hand side is all the channels, buses and effects buses I have assigned Claro to. By dragging and dropping a channel or bus into the top and bottom windows on the right, I can directly assess their EQ relationship. The top window becomes our reference track, which also can be selected by clicking the gold stars next to the channel or bus name in the left window. Claro will highlight clashing frequencies in yellow. This is representing where frequency overlaps or spectral masking is occurring and will help us make informed decisions which frequencies to cut or boost on that channel. The bottom window is the working channel and the one we want to process in more detail once we've spotted any masking. We have access to all our processing tools within this window so we don't need to leave the plugin to affect changes across the different channels. Now, not all masking is bad. It can be used to impart a thickness and a presence to your track, which is why the plugin doesn't automate this for you, but rather leave this important decision-making process to you, the user, so you can decide what's right for your track. The Invert EQ button is especially useful because you can choose to cut the EQ on one channel and Claro will automatically boost the same EQ band on another channel. For example, how I've done with the keyboards and the guitar buses here to try and create them some separation in the mid range. This will save you loads of time flipping between multiple EQ windows in your door. Whether you're mixing your first song or you're a seasoned professional, Claro has been designed to bring your EQ workflow into one plugin, to speed up the mixing process and to help you make smart informed decisions along the way. So give Claro a try today for free with a 15 day trial over at sonox.com and join the EQ revolution. I've been Ed Dawn and on behalf of Sonox, thanks for watching.